Let's go over our man, Mr. Steve Rhodes, as we do each and every Monday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Steve has an outstanding show here every trading day, 1 to 2 Eastern Standard Time. Also has a great newsletter, Mastering Probability. Now, it's very easy to get his newsletter, folks. Come over to our website at TFNN. You'll see it right in the featured content. You just hit that button. You hit subscribe. You can get Mastering Probability for one month for $149. You can get it for six months for $6.95, which is a savings of $199 or 22%. And one full year you can get for $11.95, which is a savings of $593 or 33%. Now, they all come, folks, with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So you go, you get the newsletter, get it for a month. You like the newsletter, bottom line, that's great. If it doesn't work for you for some reason, guess what? You can get your money back. So check it out. Hit Featured content, hit our man, Mr. Steve Rhodes, Mastering Probability, and you are off to the races. Steve Rhodes, what's going on? Hey, Tom, do you use the uh, Ring uh, uh, system or app uh, by any chance or something like that? The what? Ring, you know, for your house, the doorbell at your house. And oh, yeah, I got a bunch of different ones. Yes, yes. So I, I installed the, uh, uh, the Ring about a year ago. Okay. And, you know, it, it is nice because obviously with all the, you know, people, Amazon folks and yep. UPS and everybody dropping off, it is nice to have that. But one of the other features that's on there is if there's something going on in your neighborhood, you know, it'll send a message. Now, this is the first time, just literally two minutes ago. Okay. I get a message. It reads, A1A SWAT blocked off. And it goes to describe the streets where the SWAT team has blocked up, which is just two blocks away okay. from, from, from where I'm at. So um, so it'll be kind of after after this segment, I'm going to walk outside, see if I can try to figure out what's going on. I, out there. It's there's no doubt. I, but, I know but it's just, just cool. Cool to be aware. You know, that it, they, it, the it is actually, absolutely cool to be aware. It, it's yeah. th there's no doubt, man. I mean, because. Yeah, because that those the off chances uh, that and especially know. now, right? Especially now because you know things are a little heightened. Uh, hey, you were talking about inflation and and you know the folks that did all you have to do is go to the grocery store and buy groceries, and, and or pay gas here in Boca area. You know we paid over four fifty a gallon over the weekend. I heard for, you actually, and you did it last week because I heard you 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 had paid over four bucks. Uh, I, I don't know was it Wednesday or Thursday? Sure. It, listen, yeah. man. You know what? It is. It, it blows my mind. Well, I guess it shouldn't blow our mind, okay? Because the bottom line is that they're just they're they're too paranoid to go up. That's the bottom line. And it's not going to go up. I mean, it's, and you can see it. Rates are going down instead of going up, folks. Okay? And and sure. Europe, it's the same way. And our rates are actually high compared to Europe. So, it it is what it is. And. Uh, Right, yeah. man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's go back to the markets here real quickly, uh, if we can. Yep. Uh, as we always discuss, uh, or we take a look at often, you know, our seasonal cycle. We know that mid October typically marks the beginning of the favorable seasonal cycle. This is the pattern for the uh, Dow over the last uh, 80 plus years out here. And this year, that uh, bottom signal for the Dow came in on October 5th, and that was a confirmed Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. So we've now got the bottom patterns in there. The other thing is that as we take a look at the Dow, this uh, switches over to the Dow equity future contract out here. The little white rectangle area, folks, is the consolidation pattern. And the cool thing about consolidation patterns is that when they're broken, they provide us with a measured move either to the upside or to the downside. That measured move is equal to uh, the consolidation. Now, the actual move itself can be equal to or greater than the consolidation. So the nice thing about this is that the Dow Equity Future contract has busted through the consolidation. When it busted through, it actually came back and tested the top of the consolidation, rejected that. And this suggests that during this favorable seasonal cycle, which should last through about the early part of January, or between the uh, first and third week of January, this suggests that the Dow Equity Future contract should go target the 37,363 area. Now, folks, don't, don't hold me to all? the tick. Is that yeah, all, man? Right. <laughs> no, I said equal to or greater than. <laughs> I know. Listen, man, uh, it, 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 I, I love the idea that you've walked us through this for a, you know, a long period of time, Steve, and it just blows my mind, trust me. That you know the lows are in, in October and we're in the best season and I can see it. I mean it's, it's yes. crazy, but it is what it is. Sorry, go ahead, yeah. man. No, no, exactly, it is. And so the S and P 500 is it's got the same pattern, folks. So here I'm showing the ES mini and we can see how price broke through the consolidation. Like the Dow, price did come back for one day, tested and rejected, and this suggests uh, that it's off to a minimum of about 4,823 bucks or so, uh, you know, in that uh, area. So that's what the little bit bigger picture. At least going through the end of the year looks like. 
However, there's always a gotcha here. Uh, price doesn't always go up. Uh, sometimes it pulls back out here. And the S&P 500 today will generate what I refer to as a TD9 topping signal. Uh, in a TD9 pattern, the high top can come in on bars 8, the bars 9, or the bar following 9. So I've got a couple of blue arrows out here to show some other TD9 count patterns. Now, what this is telling us is that uh, that either it has already taken place, which was Friday's high. Yeah. Uh, I don't think we've taken out uh, Friday's high yet. Uh, or we could take that out tomorrow. And so by tomorrow, we should have a TD9 count topping pattern in place for the S&P 500. The first downside price target will be, again, this what I refer to as the oscillator and change line, which is currently green. Now, the, the important part about that is if we do get this TD9 count top that takes hold, price should pull back to that level. Now, right now it's printed at 46.44. As price pulls down, that level will move down a little bit or so forth. Uh, so folks, don't use that as the exact number. But if price pulls back to that level and rejects it, that really becomes the next buy point for the S&P 500 during this favorable seasonal cycle. So that was one of the reasons to show the favorable seasonal cycle, show the consolidation measure move breakout, then anticipate in the shorter term time frame what the signals are, see if price pulls back to that 4644 level and if it does that becomes the buy point during this favorable seasonal cycle. And if a top of any significance is going to form, the other thing that we want to look at, Tom, is that uh, spot volatility index. The blue line that is on this chart is the 50-day exponential moving average. Okay. And currently that's printing at about 1771. If we were to see a close above 1771, that is bad news for the S&P 500. Now, bad news would simply mean at, at a minimum, we should see price pull back to that oscillator and change line level. If price closes below, that will have to take a look at other levels of support. The reason that I say that, and folks at home can do this, and, that would, and this is... Put a chart, put the S&P 500 on the top of the chart. At the bottom, put the uh, spot volatility index. Add to it the 50-day uh, exponential moving average, which is the red line at the uh, bottom panel. And then go ahead and mark off the uh, segments where the spot volatility index is above or below that 50-day exponential moving average. When the spot volatility index, and I've got it marked here in some of the yellow yes. rectangles or squares out there, when the spot volatility index is above that level, the 50-day exponential moving average, that's when we have these pullbacks out here. So that's what to look for. It becomes pretty easy. Not that technical analysis is easy, but if we narrow down just to a few things out here, then it becomes a little bit easier. So if we look at all four daily equity future contract, the ES, the NQ, and the Dow all have these TD9 count patterns. Inside the Russell 2000, it doesn't. But the Russell 2000 cash indice, at least as of about a half an hour ago, was looking like it might form a shooting star candle. That would confirm a sell the D point. So everything is setting up here, Tom, for the markets to move higher into the end of the year. But we've got a little bit of a short-term detour. And that should be price pulling back to that oscillator and change line. I got to tell you, and folks, they, so I get coffee this morning, right? This is crazy, Steve, OK? Um, and the guy's a great you know, bartender in the back, right, getting coffee. The bottom yes. line, he has a computer going up, right? And he's making coffee, and I'm looking at the computer. I says, is that crypto? He says, oh, no, no. He says, I, I trade the option market. I says, you trade spreads? He says, oh, no, I don't, I don't know what a spread is. I buy calls. <laughs> I called Tommy up. I says, oh, my God, this is unbelievable. <laughs> I love it. Have a great one, man. Have a safe one. You too, Tom. Take Stay care. right there, folks. We'll come right back.